Seven Acres Network came about when we started talking about the cover crops and the soil health. We all knew we wanted to get together and have that support system and it was kind of informal for a while and yeah we'll have a field tour and yeah we'll do this and it got to be called That Soil Health Group and so we got together at one of the meetings and kind of brainstormed some names and, and came up with a name so that it represented what we were trying to do. That's about you know the health of the soil and more than that too that that can represent yeah, your savings and energy and it also represents the health of the community. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have our, our mission statement and our vision of you know healthy healthy soils and healthy communities. And I was excited about it because I wanted to do this 10 to 15 years ago. But since it is a new idea, kind of, and not everybody's truly supportive, you need to have everybody on board that is in like, like kind or like thinking. And so Tanya puts together some five or six things. We'll call them rules that we came up with, you know, respect, uh, honesty, you know, if, if you planted it and it was terrible, say so. Uh, but loyalty, you know, that, yeah, we know you did something and it didn't work out, but you don't need to, you know, tell everybody else that, you know, that was a silly thing to go do. Um, and support and, and positive. Yep, that didn't work out, but then it didn't rain either. Try again next year. Um, that type of camaraderie to help each other out rather than to, you know, tear one another down. I felt it was good because everybody was more open to discussion and what works and what doesn't work. Or in, and so in that way, everybody's more willing to express their own things without feeling, why would you do that, you know? Well, then it stops the discussion. And so with that being in place, I think we have a unique group now that, that can feel free to express themselves and not feel alienated. The late 90s, early 2000s, we started growing different cover crops. And you go to town to the coffee shop and you get shunned because people thought we were crazy for doing these type of things because we were just letting them stand and fall over and then plant a crop into them the next, the following year. They thought we were, you know, throwing money away. But I started seeing the benefits of doing all this and we started, you know, trying different cover crops. When we first started out, we were basically using just one or two species of plants and we moved to a, more or less a cocktail mix and figured that was working better. But we are finding now that there is some species in these cocktail mixes that we want to leave out because they are not doing what we want to do. So that's kind of where we're at now. And we kind of bumped this around, you know, with say he's done some of this and okay, then I don't have to try it because it don't work. So that's kind of why this group is really working, I feel. So. We enjoy the group because of the information we can share and the trust that has been built within the membership. This this group is has got more experience in it than what I had. And it's been very helpful to me to, to bounce the ideas off to see what they have done. I don't have to make all the mistakes, although I've made a lot of them. Just I've doubled up just to make sure they're right. <laughs> but it does help to to see how um, to get ideas because they they've made observations and then I and I've made observations and uh, for the next year it really helps in the planning to have somebody else's observations to add to that. Um, it's not really scientific, but it 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 works for me. It it really does help and is. I think sped up the whole learning process and I feel a little more secure trying some of that stuff. Um, so it's, it's been a great benefit to me. Because it takes such a, a, long, a long time to improve your soil health, kind of, we can't stop at one little hiccup.
And so with us being able to share our ideas, I think it's a very good way for us to narrow that time frame down to uh, not a half of a lifetime, but at least uh, we see some results, you know, in four or five years rather than when I do my own thing, it takes three or four years before you realize what really was the benefit. By the time you do it again, it's, it's a, almost a 10 year span to do it twice. And so we all do this together and, you know, we all have a, we can just accelerate that so fast. And you know, I have so many people that come in and they're, you know, impatient. You know, well, I plant this and I'll have a better crop next year, right? No, probably not. You know, it, it takes time. And you see the literature like I know to, and it says, you know, you'll see improvements in three to five years. Well, the soil scientists and I have observations is that out here where the moisture is less, 10 years at a minimum, 15 for no-till, well if they see benefits in 5 years in cover crops, how long is it going to take us? 10? I don't know. Uh, but the soil has a very long memory. You can see past good and past bad. We went and did a, a soil study actually on one of Daryl's dad's fields, and he said that field blew in the 30s, and you can still see where the dust line is, you know, we're 80 years later. And, you know, when I brought that up to the soil scientist, sure enough, you know, the soil tells, it still shows there. And by the same token, you see good things, but it may be many years before you see them or realize them. I, I really think we're on the right track for soil health and especially in this part of the world, wind erosion, I mean, it's, it's horrible, and I think there's ways to address that. Now, are we going to do it without making mistakes? No. We as, as farmers, we have a, a moral obligation for these resources. It's our duty. We've been given this, this ability to take care of water and soil. And we need to do that. It is, it's, it is a, uh, a resource that, no matter how you look at the graphs, it is declining. And we have to do the right thing to take care of it for, for our generations to come, uh, for our, our cities and, and our towns, for life in western Kansas.